Hello, this is Jumbo Commander, and I have something special for you today. It's a Zada Hedron Grinder Goldfish Session. A couple weeks ago, I said I was giving away a Janara deck and a Zada Hedron Grinder deck, and you can still win this Zada Hedron Grinder deck. Just follow me on Twitter at Jumbo Commander, and I'll be giving this away in just a couple days to one of my Twitter followers. And I have to say, this is such a fun deck. It's actually so fun that the deck tech I did on it didn't really do it justice. So I decided to give it a goldfish session so you can see the power in this Zodahedron grinder deck. By the way, this is the exact deck I am giving away. This is not even my personal version of Zada. Uh, it doesn't have any crazy cards or expensive things. This is a budget version that can go off like crazy. Let's go over Zada a little bit so you know what's going on during the goldfish session when crazy stuff starts happening. Zada says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zodahedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control. That's the spell could target. Each copy targets different one of those creatures. So basically, every single target spell that you point at Zada gets multiplied and goes to all of your creatures. This creates crazy shenanigans that you're about to see. Let's take a look at a goldfish session with this Zada deck. All right, let's get goldfishing this Zada Hedron Grinder deck. First, we have to see what kind of hand we're working with before we can start turn one. I think we're looking for lands and spells. Actually, this looks really good so far. Uh, let's see if we can round it out with something else. Hey, not bad. Starting off with three lands is a little bit much, but I gotta say, we're working with one of the best pieces of mana ramp we have, Ruby Medallion. And then being able to play a creature and then draw cards off of it with Crimson Wisps is great. And then Twin Flame is a huge combo enabler for this deck. I cannot ask for a better hand. So turn one, let's draw a card. Iron Mur. That's fine. We don't necessarily need more ramp, but it's good to have. Maybe we can accelerate our clock. Turn two, we draw another mountain. That's again a fine draw. Now it's the decision between Ruby Medallion and Iron Mur. I'm gonna choose Iron Mur because Ruby Medallion might let us play two cards next turn. Maybe a Krenko's Command and a Dragon Fodder or something like that. Going on to turn three, we draw a Gutter Snipe. Actually, that's a nice draw. If we play the Ruby Medallion, that lets us curve out into the Gutter Snipe, and then we have the value of being able to play Kranko's Command and deal two damage to our opponents. So I like the Gutter Snipe play right now. It's a pretty solid curve out, one, two, three. Let's see what we got in store for us on turn four. We're gonna have quite a bit of mana available to us, and then we draw, ooh, we draw a bomb right here. Battle him is crazy because it'll let us draw, a, get a bunch of mana. And being able to have mana is really important on turn four. I think we can work with this. First thing we need on the battlefield is Zada because Zada makes everything work. Now I just need to calculate exactly if we can make this work because mana is really tight. Uh, but there is a nice little interaction uh, with Twin Flame. So the first thing I want to do is get Krenko's Command on the battlefield, generating more goblins so that when we play our other spells, uh, Zada will spread it around to many more creatures. So let's get two more goblins on the battlefield. And by the way, we're going to deal two damage to each of our opponents. This Gutter Snipe is going to do work. Speaking of which, this Ruby Medallion this turn has already saved us two mana, and it's about to save us a bunch more. Uh, we're going to cast Twin Flame. Twin Flame creates a hasty copy of every creature we have on the battlefield. And one thing that's really great is that it's going to be untapped, which means that we're going to have an untapped Iron Mur so that we can cast more things. So we're gonna double up our goblins to four, double up our gutter snipe, and get another iron myrrh. By the way, we dealt two damage to them with a twin flame. We'll tap that other iron myrrh and then cast battle him. This is gonna send four damage from two gutter snipes at our opponents and add, well, nine mana to our mana pool. I'm gonna symbolize this by putting uh, a dice on my ruby medallion so we can kind of keep track of the mana. 
but we're gonna go off because Crimson Wisps is gonna draw us nine cards. Oh my gosh. And it's gonna deal damage as well. I didn't pay for it, by the way, so technically I have eight mana floating on the uh, Ruby Medallion. I was just so excited about drawing nine cards, and I should be, because look at these nine cards. They're all useful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I immediately go for the Heat Shimmer because it's what I really want to do. Uh, but then I think a little bit and decide that I can get away with playing the Legion Loyalist first and then getting a copy of the Legion Loyalist as well. Uh, the reason why is because Trample is going to be really, really important in going off and the Legion Loyalist will give us Trample. Even if the one that I just played isn't allowed to attack, the Heat Shimmered Legion Loyalist will be able to attack. So I'm going to double up the goblins to eight, get an untapped iron mur to generate a little bit more mana, have another gutter snipe. By the way, just gutter sniping damage all over the place. And now I have three gutter snipes on the battlefield. The next thing I'm going to do is draw some cards. Uh, and I'm going to draw even more cards this time. It's going to be 17 cards. Oh my gosh. 17 cards, by the way, that spell also dealt 6 damage to all each of our opponents, and I just drew 17 cards. Uh, and I have 5 mana floating and untapped Iron Mur. I don't see how I can lose uh, from this state. And I found another thing that can help out a lot, Mana Geyser. Mana Geyser can just boost your mana like crazy, even if your opponents have a few lands uh, tapped it's going to be out of control. And I realize that I kind of have everything I could ever want in my hand right now, and things have gone pretty crazy. Let's just say I use up some of my mana to just go all in right now with uh, basically a Rampage, a Titan Strength, again, a Reckless Charge, and all of these are easily paid for. It's only three mana. And I'm dealing six damage with each one with the Gutter Snipe. Uh, the Rampage does gills plus four, plus oh. The Titan Strength adds another three to the power. The Reckless Charge adds three to the power. This <laughs> Downhill Charge adds another three to the power. Uh, so I've basically just added 13 to the power of all of my creatures. And they have Trample. They're coming in. I mean, I wasn't even, I could keep going off. You know, there's there's still more things I could do in here. Uh, I mean, I could Goblin Dark Dwellers uh, back the Battle Hymn and generate more mana and keep going. That would give me a bunch of mana. And then I could even, I'm looking around for a card that could get me draw more stuff. Yep, that'll let me draw even more cards. So I could just keep going over and over again. Uh, but... I've already basically added plus 11 plus 0 to a massive amount of creatures, done a ton of damage with Gutter Snipe, and it's all turn 4. This deck is out of control. It, it, you needed to see it, is what you needed to do. Wow. Now, I had to admit, that was a pretty lucky draw, especially that battle him that I drew off the top. Uh, ultimately, this does not go off on turn four very often. Most of the time, it goes off on turn five or turn six. But if you're really excited about making this Zada deck more competitive, you can add a lot of fast mana that can let it go off on turn four more often. But as we can see, it's definitely a possibility. And once it starts snowballing, it gets out of control. Now you might have noticed there was not very much disruption or interaction in your hand and clearly no one tried to interact with you, which means that this goldfish is a very ideal situation. So your decks and your games are not always going to play out like that, but the possibility is there. This deck can be very one note combo centric, but I gotta say it's super fun. Thank you very much for watching some of the live gameplay I have. It was really fun to make. And if you guys liked it, let me know. Uh, remember, if you follow me on Twitter, you can win this Zada deck. This exact Zada deck can be yours. Follow me on Twitter. There's also like one day left to join the Janara competition to win an entirely different commander deck. Two commander decks being given away. Unbelievable. Also, if you want to write something longer, send me something, jumbocommander at gmail.com. I want to thank you one final time and remind you to win some Commander decks, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.